Today in the FIDE World Cup, we had the quarter-final tie breaks, and I'm going to take you through the match between Maxime Vachilekrav and Levon Aronian, two of the big beasts left in the tournament. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Okay, let's take a look at game two of the Rapids. So they're given 25 minutes each and 10 seconds on the clock. The first game was drawn. Well played by both players. In the second game, uh, Vachille Grave has white and it's a Gioco Piano. And well, we've seen this kind of very steady, solid start on several occasions previously. Both players have had exactly this line before. It's all very sensible and very calm. Somehow after this bishop exchange, it feels to me as though black shouldn't have any difficulties. You know, that bishop can be a dangerous piece, but once it is exchanged off, well, I quite like the rook on e6 as well. Um, both players have had this previously. Um, let me see um, here. Maxime also exchanges off that potentially dangerous bishop. And Levon breaks with d5. So that means if this is exchanged off, then black would certainly stand slightly better because he has a greater share of the centre. Some space advantage. So Maxime seeks to destabilise black's centre a little bit by attacking that knight. And it came back to e7. And then c4. So it's decision time for black. Um, you could exchange off. I think the problem is that you know this knight might land on d5. Instead, Levon played d4, closing the position. Here, knight d5 is interesting. Um, maybe that's the way for white to squeeze something out of this position. And black, white has you know some nice space on the queen side. But instead, Maxime played the knight to f5 which is kind of the traditional thing to do in these positions. But actually, because black's pieces are so well placed on the king side, that rook protects important squares here, and that knight is already around as well. In fact, white can't really build up an initiative on, on the king side very easily. Of course, black would like to take here, but that would open up the e-file. So that's why rook e8 was played, to lend this pawn some support. And now, well, that could possibly be an idea for black. So Maxime decides to defend that knight with the other one, maintaining the knight on f5. But maybe knight d2 is a better move. If that exchange off, well, I don't think black should exchange it off, by the way, then it seems to me that could be quite attractive for white. The queen is on a nice diagonal. Of course, black won't do that. Um, but this knight could find a useful role on the queen side as well, by the way, even, even after this one is exchanged off. But in the game knight h4 played, um, first sight it looks quite attractive to maintain this knight on f5, but actually white can't really build up any kind of attack behind it. G3 played to got this square from this one, and knight takes knight. And now this next little shuffle for Moronian is very clever. Now you might think that white might be able to build something here with queen f3, knight f5, but queen e7 really puts a shot, puts puts a stop to that. So if knight f5, then the queen just goes back to f8, covering h6, and that means that black can simply drive the knight away with g6. So this is going nowhere. So Maxime played queen c1, which looks at h6, and maybe out here as well. And now we see point number two to playing the queen to e7. It makes room for the knight to come into c5, d7 and then c5. <clears throat> 
And now the game is turning in black's favour. This is such a great square for the knight on c5, for the, for the knight. Can't be driven away by a pawn, and it's looking at that weak pawn on d3. This reminds me of Benoni positions, <coughs> excuse me, with colours reversed or King's Indian sometimes as well, where that pawn often turns out to be a weakness. And this is tricky, very tricky for white. It's really hard to shake black's positional grip here. So, for example, knight f5, the queen just goes back to f8, just keeps guard here, and sooner or later, <coughs> king h7 and g6 is going to happen. And black is better. So Maxime had a little bit of a think here. He invested three minutes over his next move, f4, but oh, that is risky. I can understand why he wants to lash out to try and shake this positional superiority that black has. But he's overlooked something. Let's have a look. Pawn takes pawn. After knight f5, the queen came back, and pawn takes pawn. Well, he must have been thinking this is, well, a a kind of King's Indian position. Tricky, because White's king is now exposed. But maybe he just thought, well, I've got a counterplay here. If White has time, then perhaps this rook could swing over to the king side. King shuffles here and rook g1. Well, that could be pretty attractive. But Levon's next move was really superb. Rook f6. Now, the threat is just to play the pawn to g6. Drive away the knight and then take the pawn with the rook. Fair enough. Okay, what happens on knight takes pawn? Well, then there's rook d8. And when the knight moves, crash. The rook is in. There's also rook number two coming over. This looks absolutely disastrous for white. You see, this is the problem when you start advancing your kingside pawns. If it goes wrong, oh boy. Does it go wrong quickly? Okay, so let's come back. Rook f6 played. Rook f1. So the point of that is that now the knight can retreat to either maybe here or here. And the f-pawn is guarded. But rook takes f5 was a superb exchange sacrifice. And black just takes the initiative. Aronian in control here. The pawn is threatened. The rook threatens to swing across. The queen threatens to join in the attack. And look at white's queen. Just way across the other side of town. It's tremendous position for black. Maxime hurries to exchange off pieces. It's the only thing he can really do. Um, well... I mean, my computer thinks that white is still okay if he gives up this pawn here with f6. That can't be taken with the queen because this could be taken with the knight. But this is still really difficult to defend. Um, and queen b4 is a tricky move. Thinks that that is the best move for white. But that's irrelevant. In human terms, this is... Though these kind of moves, maybe not f6, but queen b4 afterwards, impossible to see. Maxime exchange rooks. Queen takes. And here is a really important moment in the game. Aronian gave a check with the queen. He could have played knight e4. Now, of course, that knight can't be taken because of the pin. Queen takes queen. And how does white defend here? Well, it is impossible. There is no good defense. Let me just show a couple of variations. Well, what happens if... Okay, let's just play a couple of random moves for white. A5. Let's discover exactly what the threat is. So we check. We check again. Now... Knight g3 is pretty good. Knight d2 is a killer, an absolute killer. Queen and knight are so often a deadly attacking duo. They complement each other 
really well. So what's the big deal? Well, first of all, the rook is on prees. Black is also a pawn up as well, so exchanges will lead to a winning position for black. Um, let's see, what about, let's shift the rook out of the way. Here, we'll give a check, and knight f3. Well, that's pretty clear. Something disastrous is going to happen here. Okay, so moving the rook doesn't help the cause. Rook f2. Sorry, that, that's rook c1 again. Rook f2. Let's try this. We give a check. So the king steps here, we take the rook. So rook here. Check with the knight and its mate. King f1, queen e1, mate, or king h1, queen here. So this is a disaster. And, well, if the, the queen comes back, uh, just take everything here, and that extra pawn is going to see you through in the king and pawn endgame. The king comes out and takes some pawns. Um, so knight e4, that is the key move. I mean, there are various other defensive tries, but basically this is just winning. So let's come back. Instead, Aronian played queen e2 and took on d3, which also looks very attractive. But it's not as easy in this case to bring the knight into the attack. So pawns exchanged here and queen b3. My machine still thinks that f6 is the best defensive try for white here. But anyway, queen b3 played. And you can see it's not so simple to, to bring that knight over. So a couple of checks. I mean, black has a draw here. There's no problem with that. But I'm sure that Levon you know, was wanting a win here. And indeed, you know, he played on. Um, f6 is apparently the most solid move here. Um, but h5 played. Well, he's hoping to use the h-pawn in the attack. Very understandable. But in this case, it's actually not the best idea. Here, knight f2 should be good enough for black. I mean, this still looks terrifying for white, to my eyes. Looks, looks like a really difficult position. Um... But this should be enough for, for for black to hold the game. And, and well, I mean, this is still extremely tricky. I mean, all bets are off there. But instead of knight f2, Levon continued with his plan of h4. Perhaps he was only anticipating queen f3 here. But he completely overlooked rook f3. An utter disaster. When the queen moves back, queen takes knight and it's game over, then white will be a whole rook up. Well, Levon found a way to continue into an endgame where he was just the exchange down. But this was not a good position. I have to say that Maxime's technique from this moment on was absolutely perfect. The knight is no match for the rook. Now, instead of plunging on, which would lead to potential exchanges, uh, Maxime played excellently here. He just held the position, brought his king over to attack the h-pawn. And now black can do nothing. Moving the king makes no sense at all. We're just going to take here. Um, so Aronian tried this. So it's led to pawn exchanges. here so it's three against two I mean black can dream of a blockade here but it really is only dreams and now well you can you can just protect this pawn but instead Maxime understands the basics very well in this position he didn't leave it to chance and just went for a very simple straightforward win in the king of pawn endgame uh, let's just quickly show you what could happen here. The king has to go back. 
And now we just let, let black sweat a little bit and let him sweat again and this pawn is going to drop very soon, for example, here and here. And thank you very much. King takes pawn. Game over. Well, that meant, of course, that Maxime Vachilegrave goes through into the semi-finals. He will face Timur Radjobov in, in that uh, match. Um, he said afterwards that he'd missed this exchange sacrifice and thought it was very strong. He also said, this was scary, but in a World Cup, you cannot avoid such scary moments. Yeah, he's very calm and, you know, he managed to keep his cool in a really difficult situation. And I'm afraid it was Levon who played so creatively with his exchange sacrifice, who buckled at the end and he is out. So let's see. It's getting very tense. We're getting to the business end of the tournament. Thanks for watching.